guys, it is Friday and it is the start of the Historical Romance Readathon that I'm hosting with Lisa and Lacey and I'm very excited. I am actually already currently reading a different book though that wasn't part of my TBR. I wanted to finish this before the readathon. I have to finish up the Raycast so I can tell you my thoughts. This is for reading BookTube's worst books of 2020. So I'll link that video down below because it should be up already. But this one I'm finishing the last 100 pages of and I already started It Takes Two to Tumble, I think, by Cap Sebastian. And I'm two and a half hours into that one, I think. I've listened to it on the to way to and from work today. Day. and it's pretty good so far it is class difference so he the one hero is a recluse lord and he's living in a house he inherited from someone and i think people know that he is gay and so that's why he is pretty much ostracized from society and he's living alone and then sam owns a bar and he tries to break into his house to get a picture of someone a portrait of someone like a scandalous portrait that the previous owner of the house had of her and the other hero doesn't have it i forget his name it's hartley i think he doesn't have it but they're like gonna look for it together and then they're like already hooking up very early on in the book which is surprising because like in this one they don't get together until at least 100 pages in and they're already hooking up like two hours into the audiobook so it's good so far i'm enjoying it and then I have a stack of stuff that I could get to. I do have stuff on my e-reader as well. I definitely have to get to A Notorious Vow and to Night Song because this live show is next week. And then, I don't know, I really am interested in getting to Ann Mallory because I know that Jen from the Book Refuge really liked this, but I haven't read anything by Ann Mallory and I haven't heard a lot of people talk about this. And then I do have another Cat Sebastian that I possibly could get to. It is Unmasked by the Marquess. I'd love to get to this Eloisa James, Much Ado About You, but I've heard it's not everyone's cup of tea, so I'm kind of nervous getting into this one. And this is a while you were sleeping retelling inspired book it is while the duke was sleeping while you were sleeping is sandra bullock and it's a masterpiece so i'd love to read this as well but i don't know and we are having daily challenges and on instagram and then we have daily instagram templates and then we have our read with us live show tonight and then i'm having my live with kerrigan burn on my instagram on sunday that's what i'm up to so far i'm actually really enjoying this i'm reading it because jessen didn't like it and that's for that video i'm doing but i'm really enjoying it i really like it so she is a raycast she's a rake and she's really ruined for it which really shows you the double standard because rakes happen all the time in society who are men and no one gives a flying fig about that but people when it's a woman condemn her and they're really nasty to her in her town and then adam's an architect who lives next door and he has two children and he's a widow and he's adorable so i'm excited to finish this so that's all i have we do currently have an animal stuck in our chimney and um can't get it out and they we've had two people tell us it's impossible to get out from where it is so I'm gonna go to my parents' house tomorrow because <laughs> I can't listen to that anymore. It's so sad to say, but that's the reality where we are right now. So we have chimney people coming out on the 25th to check things out and seal things up and try to get remnants out. It's really sad. I'm really not happy with how that's happening, but that's what's happening. So I'll probably go to my parents' house tomorrow just to get the dogs out. They're doing really well with it actually. Darcy's just a little curious, but other than that, they're not scared or anything. So, um, but I'll probably hang out at their house all day and probably get a lot of reading done because I don't have anything else to distract me while I'm at their house except for my parents. So I did get some book mail. I'm really excited for it. I want to show you. I got some thrift books. I ordered some. My orders should come out throughout the weekend. So I got Kiss Me Annabelle with the step back, which is really exciting because my copy of Much Ado About You does not have a step back and I want it to, but I'm excited for this and it's part of the Much Ado About You series. And then I got The Highlander's English Bride by Vanessa Kelly. I got the first two in the series. I don't know which one is actually book one. I think The Highlander Who Protected Me is the book one. Oh, this is book three because I already own book two. Book two is The Highlander's Christmas Bride. So then I ordered this as well. So I'm excited to have these. I have like three more coming in the mail I think so I'm excited I might do some eBay shopping tonight because I'm stressed and eBay comes through so we'll see but that's what I have an update you for so I'm gonna go read I'll probably listen to more of my audiobooks I do have to sew for my Etsy shop and that's what I'm up to all right, so I wanted to show you guys two shirts I got from XOXO Lady Whistledown. I'm super excited about these. This is Kerrigan Byrne. That's how you spell her last name. So just feel the burn. I'm interviewing her on Sunday, which is tomorrow. So I had to get that. I'm happy it arrived. And then the Duke and I are to be married, which I love. I'm really excited for this. Hey guys, so it is currently Saturday morning. I just showed you my shirts down there. And I did just shower. And so my hair is just a little bit wonky right now. 
sorry. I finished The Right Cast yesterday and I gave it five stars. I talked about it at the end of my reading Booktube's Worst Books of 2020. Like I said, I'll link that down below. I really loved it. I loved how realistic it was having a female rake and how she doesn't get to act like a normal rake because women can't do that and people were so rude to her, threatening her, yelling at her, causing like riots because of her. She's writing a, like a tell-all expose about like how she became who she was and like who else was part of her relationship that she had that caused her to be ruined and how he's very well known and very wealthy and she's known as this awful person and she's like how is that fair so it's very feminist I really loved it I said in my video for my vlog that it really reminds me of the what women were writing in the 1800s because I read uh, a doll's house by Henry Gibson that's not a woman but it's about like being a housewife during the 1800s and then we pair that with the yellow wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman and that is about how women were just seen as his hysterical and that was about how um, they were put on the rest here and the author herself was put on the rest here and felt like she was going to go insane so that's why she wrote the yellow wallpaper and it is just a classic piece of literature and I love teaching it to my kids we teach it to them in the fall so I'm already done with that but that's what this really kind of reminded me of I loved it so so much five out of five stars I loved Adam the most he was adorable so fun he reminded me of Philip from Tristan Philip with Love he just is very damaged trigger warnings in this though I don't know if I've mentioned yet for loss of a child loss of a loved one his wife wasn't supposed to ever get pregnant again and they knew that but they accidentally got her pregnant and she died because of that so he feels like it's his fault he has two kids i would have loved to see the kids a little more but i really love this i wasn't supposed to read it for this readathon but it is a new to me author he's shirtless it is in 2020 i think this came out in 2020 so this counts as my new release i didn't even realize that this could yeah May 2020 and then i am starting on the historical hellions book night song this one starts out very dark. I didn't realize that. I should have, like, there's no way I would know because I haven't read it yet. But there is trigger warnings for loss of a loved one because of racism. And uh, some a relative of hers is hanged right in front of her. And it was really devastating. Really, that was just a three-page prologue and it really hits you. So it's good so far. I'm only, like, ten pages in. She's a school teacher and the soldiers are coming back home, I think. And I know she falls for a soldier. And they've mentioned his mustache twice already. And I'm 10 pages in. The original cover has the mustache on it and Lacey told me that she's obsessed with his mustache so I think that's funny. I'm also wearing my new Hello Lovely sweatshirt. It says dead serious about books and I'm obsessed with it. I love this color. I do have a different sweatshirt in this color from Paws. The, it's like an animal dog sweatshirt shirt company so I really like this color but I love this sweatshirt but I'm about to go over to my parents house and spend the day there so I will update you guys maybe while I'm there maybe I'll bring my camera and show you Gigi. Hey guys, so it is currently Saturday night. I know I said I was going to update you guys when I was at my parents' house, but sorry, I'm trying to pull up my status so far of what I've read. Um, I ended up being a lot busier at my parents' house than I thought I was. I finished up my essay for my master's class, which was like 16 pages. Not too long, considering my last class I was writing very long essays, like 20 plus page essays a week. So not too bad, but I didn't finish that until like 11.30. I had lunch and then Lisa went live with Lorian Heath on Instagram. So I watched that from noon to like 12.45. Then at one, my mom and I went to Half Price Books and Hobby Lobby. So I will show you what I got tomorrow. It's too dark in my library to show you what I got, but I did end up finishing A Gentleman Never Keeps Score by Cat Sebastian. I always forget the title of that. And I'm giving this one four and a half stars. It was so cute. So we had Sam and Hartley. The only thing that I didn't like about the audiobook was that the narrator would not change voices when the narration changed so it was third person limited changing between Hartley's perspective and Sam's perspective but he didn't alter his voice at all so I didn't know whose perspective it was it was a little hard to keep track of that but other than that it was really cute I really liked how they were in different social classes but Hartley like didn't care about society's expectations especially since they already had ideas about him and like shunned him so like he had a cook who was uh, pregnant out of wedlock and he was like so kind to her and like gave her so many things and like helped her and it was adorable and Sam and Hartley had so much communication which I absolutely loved. Hartley was taken advantage of when he was young and pretty much groomed into a situation where he was taken advantage of so he has a lot of guilt for that. He feels like he sold himself for money when he didn't really and he was too young to understand that and so he doesn't like to be touched. Sam was very much like is this okay? 
okay i want to figure out what it like makes you okay i loved it it was very steamy still though so it was such a great book and they were still trying to come together to figure out where that painting was of one of sam's friends that was a risque painting that the person that hartley's took over the house for had so it was good. I really enjoyed it. Really fun audiobook. And then I did start, I always forget what this is called, a Julia Quinn audiobook. So I wanted to start a Stacey Reed audiobook, but the narrator's voice was like very breathy and it was really hard to understand in the car because like that sound is from my speakers in my car, which is not the same at all as like with AirPods if I'm listening to it with headphones. It's probably fine with headphones, but not in my car. So I started A Night Like This by Julia Quinn. It's book two in the Hearst Smythe Smith Quartet series and it's so good. So it's Daniel, who's the brother of the girl from the first book, Lenora. I don't remember her name, but he actually was in a duel, so he was gone the entire book for the first book, and then he came back at the end. This book picks up right at the, from the end of the first book, and we had the prologue, though, where we saw the duel. Duels are stupid. I always think they're stupid. Men just need to stop being such babies about their reputations and just deal with it, but there was something that happened someone accused something of something so they dueled, and the guy shot him wide in the shoulder, and he meant to shoot wide slipped and ended up shooting him in an artery in his leg and almost killing him so he was banished he's back now and he's falling for the governess of his cousins and she is the piano player from the end of book one which i thought was really fun so it's really cute so far i'm about 23 percent in i am 23 percent and almost to 25 percent i've just been listening to the audiobook while i drove home and then i've been sewing for about an hour so it's really good I really like it so i'm excited to listen to more it's he's like not even ashamed that she's a governess he's just like i want to see my cousins and then it's like really he wants to hang out with her so it's really fun and then i also i only got to read like an hour at my parents house but i a little over an hour like an hour and a half so i'm 80 pages into this and i'm really enjoying it they already said his rakish mustache was just irresistible which i think is funny she the beginning i think already said was very traumatizing to her um she saw a loved one get lynched in the beginning and now it's later on and she doesn't really trust union soldiers because union soldiers were the ones who lynched her family member and so he is a soldier and she's a school teacher and it's annoying because she can't like have her reputation be ruined at all so she can't even be in like the presence of men because she has signed this contract because she's a teacher as a teacher i understand that kind of pressure but it's cute so far he's like irresistible to her and it's really fun so i'm enjoying it i'm only 80 pages in though so we'll see how the rest goes i'm planning on reading a lot tonight though so we'll see how it goes also i keep on forgetting to tell you but the bridgerton musical is amazing i'm obsessed i have so many of the songs stuck in my head all day like the burn for you song is my favorite but then eloisa's song is amazing if you didn't know it's on tiktok but i see it on the person's instagram account she posts a lot about it and then she also posts a lot on her twitter i'm not on tiktok i don't want to be on tiktok though i'm tempted now because of the bridgerton content but it's an amazing musical production thing going on where they're coming up with songs and eloisa's is amazing and oceans away also has been stuck in my head all day so they're amazing but loving that and yeah that's all i have so i'm gonna talk to you guys tomorrow all right so i got this stack yesterday at half price books so i found a jennifer ashley which i'm very excited for i actually haven't read this one yet this is book i think six in the series it's daniel which i think is cameron's son someone's son is daniel and i don't remember whose it is but i'm excited to have this i'm glad i found that this one um it's a highlander book so it's highland whispers i had to buy it it is so pretty and then shirley busby is an author who has the prettiest covers her other book was there but i don't remember i think i read the synopsis and i was like that does not sound like a good synopsis it sounds kind of problematic but her covers are stunning so this one did sound good and then I found this one, which is a privateer romance, I think. He's a privateer. Well, he's a captain, so I'm excited for that. It's so pretty. And then this one was in the clearance section, and it sounds so, so good. So it is, she's a widow, and she, like, asks to be this guy's mistress, and he says yes. And she's like, oh. And then they end up falling for each other as she's his mistress so i just love that cover i've never heard of that author and it was only two dollars half price books so i got this whole stack which i'm excited about i gotta tell you about my current read so i am about 120 pages in tonight's song and it's really good so far and like the romance hasn't really developed too much they just like know that they
they like each other. I'm hoping they don't get together too early. Every Beverly Jenkins book I've read, they're together like halfway through and then it's just the rest of the story and I want more build up in the romance in her books. I still love her books, but that's just how she writes a lot of her books. I wonder if there's any books that don't follow that. And then I started A Night Like This by Julia Quinn yesterday and I'm already 80% through now. It is Daniel's story. I don't know if I told you. I think I did. It starts right after Just Like Heaven and it's really good. It's a class difference. She's a governess and she's running from a past and he's also running from a past. And so there's at one point like someone tries to kill one of them while they're together and they don't know who, who it is and so it's really good and they really like each other but she because of her past like doesn't want to let him in and she's like devastated by what happened and so the romance is very slow building they really do like each other but she is so hesitant to let him in and he's higher class and even like his aunt is like you're not gonna be with her like there's no way and it's really good. So I'm really enjoying that audiobook and I'm excited for the third book. So what Julia Quinn does so well in her series is makes you so excited for the next one. The next one is the guy that was in the duel with Daniel whose leg was like shattered and he has a limp and it's with, what is her name? From the first book, it's her cousin. So it's the one that faked sick to get out of the performance that the main character of this audiobook, well this book, um, stood in for, for the performance so Sarah is her name and I'm really excited for that book so I might listen to that audiobook but I really want to read Lady Bridget's Lover I think by Maya Rodal this one Maya Rodal Maya I had a student <laughs> spelled that way and her name was Maya and so that's what I always see when I see that name now but I think most people pronounce it Maya so I'm not sure I think it's Maya Rodale this is Lady Bridget's Diary it's a recommendation from Lisa Lisa loves Maya Rodale she just posted her Maya Rodale guide because she like binged through all of her books and I read The Wicked Wallflower and I really like that so I think I want to listen to that one next and maybe possibly my darling duke but i can't listen to that in the car because the audio narrator was just so breathy and i can't do that so that's my update so far i have to go film some videos so i will talk to you guys when i have read some more is that miss lily just cuddling okay hey guys so i literally just finished the last page of night song this took me a lot longer than i thought it would to read i wanted to finish it by yesterday but it's 370 pages so it is pretty long and i'm giving it four stars i really loved the romance but i do think the ending was dragged out a bit too much with this villain that was thrown in there it just seemed like a secondary plot added on to like the normal story and i don't know if it was really that necessary and it could have wrapped up a little quicker but the romance was really great they're both very stubborn people and I don't want to give any spoilers so we'll definitely talk about certain aspects in our live show on Saturday on my channel for the Historical Hellions book club this was our first pick I really loved it as Beverly Jenkins first book I mean there's a lot of history involved I haven't read the author's note yet because I literally just finished and she has a couple pages in the author's note but I'm giving you four stars I really enjoyed it and there is a trigger warning though for miscarriage there is a character in here who miscarries so make sure you know that going in and of course with the beginning when I talked about the lynching and the loss of a loved one in the very first couple pages of this book and that really caused Kara not to want to trust Chase because he's a union soldier and she's been betrayed by them before so that was really sad but I really liked it they were both very very stubborn and so it took them a while to warm up to each other which I liked and it was fun I really liked it so four to five stars and then I also started an audiobook today by Stacy Reed a different one so I started Duchess by Day Mistress by Night and I'm about halfway through the audiobook I did listen to it on my run this morning and then I had to pack some orders for my Etsy shop and then I vacuumed a little bit so she's a widowed heroine she's 26 and she married someone three times her age so she was 16 and he was 42 and she's been like bred to be a duchess her whole life because she married a duke and he died five years into their marriage and now it's been five years since he's been dead she has a toddler son who's six and she needs to find out where her servant went so like her nursemaid just completely disappeared she wants to find out what happened to her so her brother said hey i know someone he's like someone you can go to when you want to figure things out and that's reese who's our hero and he is trying to take care of his siblings so his one sister is actually deaf and his other one's scarred and so the very beginning it has him doing sign language with his sister which i thought was really cool and he's trying to take care of them and something happens with that a little later on which I don't want to spoil but she is our heroine is looking for a 
person, not a mistress, but like someone to have an affair with because she's been widowed and she's like, I want someone to have fun with and she doesn't want to get remarried. And so she's talking about that awkwardly with her brother, but she is trying to figure out like different people she could have a sort of affair with. And she's really into Reese though when she meets him. So something can start there. So that's where really the story is going. And then she needs Reese's help for something else. He's very, I don't know who he reminds me of. I feel like it's like a Lisa Kleypas hero. He, or like a Kerrigan Burton hero. He just does things and he gets repaid paid in favors so he like knows everything about everyone and he can really find the secrets of people and where people are the normal bow street runners can't figure that out so he does so he's the one you go to if you need help so it's really fun i like it i'm excited to see where the story goes and it's very steamy they really like each other it's obvious they like each other and he just asked her for a favor and repayment for helping her with something that she needed his help with so it's good I'm excited to continue on and then I'm going to pick up Joanna Shoup's book next because I have to finish that before Thursday because that's what our live show is. I just cannot get over how precious she is. Darcy went outside. It's a little cold so I had to put her jacket on but I wanted to chat with you guys. It is now Monday night and I talked to you when I finished Night Song and I watched Cinderella with my sister, the Roger and Hammerstein's version with Brandy and Whoopi and Whitney Houston. I loved that growing up and all the Bridgerton musical stuff made us want to watch that Cinderella and so we did because I think like there's a scene with the prince in Bridgerton and then I started singing the prince is giving a ball and we we're like we need to watch this and now I want to watch Sister Act 2 because of Whoopi and Sister Act 2 is one of my favorite movies so I really wanted to watch it but I haven't I might watch it sometime this week though when my sister works but I started in a notorious vow and it is the cutest thing it is the cutest thing so far so Oliver is deaf and he really has taken the brunt of society judging him because of it so he's a recluse he's like to go anywhere because he knows what people say about him even his family and Christina is in his gardens and runs into a dog his dog and freaks out and falls and hits her head and he helps her and he's teaching her how to sign and he like really likes her and there's just really sweet tender moments between them and it's only 35 pages in and I'm already swooning over how just sweet and adorable this romance is like he is just really into her but like wants to still act like he doesn't want to be around anybody but he's teaching her different signs and sign language and it's adorable and she's like oh but I really loved your voice when he's like oh I don't talk sorry I know I sound weird and she's like but it was lovely and I'm just like oh I'm loving this so I'm excited to see what else happens I know Frank shows up from the Rogue of Fifth Avenue they already talked about like a house being on Fifth Avenue which I thought was fun because that's her other book but I'm loving it so much and I really need to go back and read the other two books in the series because it's really good but that's what I have I'm gonna read all tonight and then go back to work tomorrow so I got a really fun package yesterday full of all of these books from Monty on Instagram. She had a bunch of extras that she wasn't gonna do anything with, so she sent them my way, and these are set aside for a giveaway. They're a bunch of copies of stuff that I already own, so like Julie Garwood, um, some Joanna Lindsay that I own, and then a bunch that I don't own, so like, oh my goodness, we have Joanna Lindsay with a nice step back, and I don't know if I have this, but I love that cover, and then some really fun copies so thank you so much to monty for sending those my way i'm super excited i just got home from work and hopefully my glasses aren't too annoying i did finish an audiobook yesterday so today is wednesday i keep on saying today's thursday today's wednesday and let me go to my audiobook app i just finished duchess by day mistress by night by stacy reed i finished that yesterday and sorry if you can just see a little bit of the book here um you're on a stack of books right now but i finished duchess by day and mistress by night and i'm giving it three and a half stars it was good she's a duchess and she's a widow and she has a child and she needs to find i don't know if i've even told you about this book yet she needs to find um a missing nursemaid because she like raised helped raise her son and she just disappeared so she wants to figure out where she went and so they hire Reese who is like known as like the fixer around town he knows everything and he gets paid in like secrets and not money and he has sisters one's deaf and one is scarred that he wants to get into society and have nice marriages and so he's kind of gonna ask our heroine for help Georgiana I think was her name and they end up starting an affair because Georgiana wants to have an affair with someone since she's a widow she can do that and she misses intimacy and it's fine like she's not supposed to be with him because it's like different social classes because he's not someone who is well known and respected in society and 
It was good for the first half because there was like intrigue of him trying to figure things out for her, like secrets, because that's his job. And then about halfway through, I was really bored. And then a trope entered that I don't like. So I had like two hours left in the audiobook and I'm just like, do I even want to finish this? So three and a half stars. It was fine. I think I still kept it at a three because I ha was at that point where I was like, I don't really want to finish the rest of the story. But I did because I wanted it to count as reading. I am also reading... I think I have the copy out down here. I do. I started on masked by the Marquess and this is our character named Robert but then they changed to Robin and I was very confused how it changed from Robert to Robin I think I missed that and then her real name is Charity and so Charity has been posing as Robert slash Robin Charity is her name she has been living as a man for the past seven years because um, she worked as a like a servant in their house and the son passed away and the daughter was going to not have like any money or anything so she poses as the son and goes to school as him is in society as him and the sister is now like coming out into society so she's been a man for seven years and everyone thinks she's a man and she loves being a man and meets Alistair because she lies to Alistair saying your dad was my sister's godfather we need your help coming out in society for her so she just wants to use his status to help her uh, sister really just friend get a husband and so she is figured out and Alistair is angry and that's what's happening but she's figured out about like the lie about the godfather thing and so then she has to come clean about being a woman her and Alistair have already had a couple moments Alistair is bisexual and so he was super attracted to her as Robert and they become really close friends and now we just figured out that she's actually Charity and not Robert slash Robin so that's where it's going from here Alistair has to work really hard to have a good image in society and like really um clean up his family's image because his dad <laughs> had like a million affairs and has like a million children and Alistair is obviously like the the child that is actually like in marriage kind of thing and not a bastard child so very interesting so far i'm enjoying it and i'll probably finish that maybe tomorrow hopefully tomorrow and then i'm still reading a notorious vibe by doing the shoot i fell asleep reading it last night it's super cute oliver is just a giant cinnamon roll and i love that and our heroine really wants like the intimacy part of marriage but like she doesn't know if he wants that because it's like a marriage of convenience and it's really adorable though she is 19 and i don't know if i like reading about a 19 year old uh, with him like she just feels very young and that's how I'm reading her is very young I know that we do have young heroines often in historical romance But not in the newer ones I feel like and so I don't know if I like that she's 19 I wish she was a little older, but she was gonna get married to like an extremely really awful man Who is I think I've already told you like super old so she doesn't want to but it's really adorable so far I don't know if I'll give it five stars it depends on how it ends because they're still um, just like dancing around each other so we'll see but I really love Oliver and he their communication is just adorable and how much she's like trying to communicate with him and like she makes sure she looks at him she's learning sign language so it's really adorable but if I finish that I will read Outlaws something the ebook that I need to read that is um, self-published but I do have the live show tomorrow so we'll see I have a lot of work though to do for my masters i have the, my essay i'm still working on so we'll see if i get to that but that's all i have and i'm sad that the readathon's almost over and then i have reading plans that aren't historicals after this and i'm not looking forward to it because i just want to read historicals but i have a couple arcs i want to read and a video i want to do so it's fine i'm excited to read those i just don't want to stop reading historicals but bridgerton musical has been posting new songs and they posted like the behind the scenes live of them making a song for violet and it broke my heart there was a line that said there's emptiness in this empty nest and then she's talking about to her husband and saying how hard it is without him <gasps> I almost started crying guys so I'm still obsessed with Bridgerton musical but yeah I need to go and uh see what we're doing for dinner and read which is my life so yeah I'll talk to you guys later we have another day another night of cuddling with my babies sisters at work so they cuddle up Hey guys, so it is a little bit later than when I first filmed my previous clip, but I finished finally Notorious Vow, and I was determined to finish. I had like 150 pages left, I finished it all, and I'm conflicted. So at the beginning I loved. I loved how adorable Oliver was. He's definitely a cinnamon roll hero. He wanted to save our heroine, whose name is Christina, and she had to get away from like a really, really bad proposal, and her parents were awful, but about halfway through, it kind of slowed down, and then I really felt like 
the villains were very over the top like her parents were villains and he had a villainous cousin and they just felt very melodramatic and the ending felt very melodramatic but i really loved how he was deaf and how that was used in here and he was trying to invent a hearing device and their romance in the beginning was so good like the first half was so good but then like the second half wasn't the best so i know people have mixed feelings i've seen from three to a five star for this book and i'm thinking i'm gonna give it 3.5 but round it up to four because of the good aspects did outweigh the bad but near the end it just felt very like the villains were just caricatures that were villainous that didn't really have any more depth to them other than that they were there to be the villains especially her parents and his cousin like the two villainous people like that was just all they were they were just greedy and that was it and they would do anything for money so it was okay um i loved seeing frank in here though frank is in the rogue of fifth avenue which i loved i gave that five stars i think i love the uptown girl series well i know i love the uptown girl series more than this book but i'm interested to read the other books because i just really liked joanna sheep especially with the other series i liked how i was in america but i didn't really feel american-y because they spent a lot of time at his house so they didn't really go a lot of places they did, did go to central park they went out to eat at one point which i thought was cool like the women went to like an ice cream parlor together so we do see a lot of progression in society in that aspect and because it's in the late 1800s so it was good not the best 3.5 rounded up to four on goodreads so there is that book and i'm gonna start outlaws delight i'm excited the ebook it's like a little over 100 pages so i should be able to read a lot of it and then i'm continuing listening to my audiobook and then i really wanted to read courtney milan but there's only tomorrow left and it's already nine o'clock right now and i go to bed at 10 and uh my live shows at eight tomorrow so i don't have too much time to read tomorrow and i probably have to work on my essay for my master's tomorrow after school because i'm not that far into it and i try to get it done like i give myself through saturday to finish it it's due on sundays and i try to finish it by saturday morning and only leave like one or two paragraphs to finish by saturday morning because i don't like my weekends to be taken up by other things so i don't have a lot done i have two paragraphs out of the whole essay which is gonna be like 15 pages so not too much is done yet it's not going to be that hard a lot of it's lesson plans well a lesson plan after write and then just like how i used research incorporate into the lesson plan from what we've been reading so far in the class but it's not gonna be that bad i do have a schedule to our lay tomorrow and it's teacher work time which i'm gonna use to grade some essays and then get to work on this essay so yeah i have a lot of essays left to grade right now i always put them off and i need to not do that so i have to grade essays tomorrow but i'm glad i finished this and i'm gonna go ahead and start my ebook i swear it is the next day but my sister worked again and um they get in the same positions i am watching samantha's historical romance vlog right now from books with samantha i'm gonna show you my puppies i swear it's a new day i have a different outfit on but sorry if i look a little disheveled i had to do a workout video today but um it is thursday night and it is 7 15 my live shows at 8 with lacy and lisa this collects thread whenever i sew and like even if i wash it it's just like stuck so ignore that but i did finish the what did i finish miss lily miss lily she's like what are you doing so i finished unmasked by the marquess by cat sebastian and this is the bisexual hero and the non-binary love interest and it was okay i ended up giving it three and a half stars and i do think that the plot really centered around the same conflict through the entire book about them not being able to be together for certain reasons and there wasn't really much else to the plot but also felt like a lot was happening off page and i was kind of confused trying to keep up with what was happening like with her sister sister and his brother and i can't really say like a lot actually happened in the book so that's why i'm giving it three and a half stars i wasn't like oh i have to finish this i'm so into it like i have been for some of the books during this readathon it was just like oh i had to finish it to finish it before the readathon was over and that's why i finished it so quickly so it was okay i did like how robin robert charity i'll just call her robin didn't want to give up being a man because to do something and to make something happen she would have to go back to living life as a woman and she really did not want to do that and so that really 
throw a wrench in the relationship because you can't really make it work for specific reasons that I can't tell you because it would be a spoiler, but it was really good. The romance. The romance was very steamy and Alistair was just like, Alist Alistair was so into Robin and just like unapologetically into her and would do anything to be with her and was determined to find out how they could be together because of other certain situations why they couldn't be together but I really liked that it's just like the plot itself wasn't that engaging so three and a half stars and then I started out Lost Delight and got 10% in and I'm nowhere near done close but I'll read some before our live show and this one he was a sheriff and then he was set up for a crime I think and is like set to hang for the crime and then he escapes and goes to like this outlaw town and kind of falls for like the bar owner. So everybody in the town so far is like, oh, it's the sheriff. We've got to kill him because he put us all in jail. But like they're an outlaw town, so it's fine. I don't know. It's interesting so far. We'll see how I feel about it. It's super short. It's like a little over 100 pages. So yeah, I'll probably finish that tomorrow, but I will probably only update you guys one more time until I'm done with the vlog. I have to go read a little bit before my live show. And then it's Friday tomorrow, and I'm very excited for that. I need a break. I'll probably start Julia Quinn's The Sum of All Kisses on audio next because I really want to read it, but that's all I have. I'm going to talk to you guys later. Hey guys, I'm here to close out this vlog. Megan from Books and Boobs just went live on her Instagram of books she found, so I need to watch that. So I'm going to wrap this up real quick. It is Friday. My sister just ran out because she's picking up some dinner and has to pick up something from a store. I did want to show you real quick. I got, I'm trying to hurry up so I can watch this live. I got my Highlander romance sweatshirt from uh, Fugly Barbie. I'll link them down below. I bought this with my own money. I'm obsessed. They have a whole romance line. They have a scoundrel one I really want. They have vampire, werewolf. All those goodies I'm gonna do a reading vlog centered around that wearing that so I'm excited but I read a total of seven books I didn't get to the Dahlia Rose Dahlia Rose I didn't get to the Outlaws Delight which is I'm really sad I only read like 12% because we had our live last night so I got like no reading done but I did finish seven books and I'm really happy the beginning of the week was a lot better than the end of the week I think my favorite that I read was the Ray Kess. I loved that. And I really liked the first Cat Sebastian book I read, not so much the next one, but really great reading week. I want to read more Courtney Milan too, so I have to read The Duchess War and uh, The Duke Who Didn't next. And I'm listening to another Julia Quinn. I'm just like never stopping with the historicals. I'm going to continue reading them. I need to read My Darling Duke by Stacey Reed. I have a whole stack over here that I still wanted to pick up for the readathon that I didn't get to. So I'm going to continue reading historicals, but that is what I read for this vlog. Let me know down below if you participated, what your favorite was, or any historicals you think I really need to read. And that's all I have. As always, thank you so much for watching and have a good day. Bye.